Uh, as you know, I grew up with learning difficulties. Some people are surprised to, to hear at the age of five, I had a bad accident, head trauma, brain injury, and I had these learning challenges, if you were. You know, I had bad focus. I had no memory to speak of. I didn't, teachers would have to repeat themselves four, five, six times, and then I, would, I wouldn't get it. I would pretend to understand, and I, I don't know if anyone could relate to that, um, but I had this like imposter syndrome when I was a child. And, um, and I, it took me actually a few years just to learn how to read. I remember, I, I don't talk about this, but in school, in elementary school, all my friends, they, they got invited to be part of this mass program. Because I always played with all the, the Dungeons and Dragons and the <laughs> comic book geeks. And the only difference with them and me is I didn't have the grades. They're really, really smart, right? And, um, but they, um, there was this group called MASP, and MASP stands for More Able Student Program. And uh, it was me and my friend Joey, we weren't invited in this program, so we created our own little group, our own clique, and we called it LASP. We were the Less Able Student <laughs> Program. And, um, and so I remember at the age of nine, a teacher pointing to me, talking to another adult, saying, that's the boy with the broken brain. And that was my label. And, and anyone who has a child or anyone who's, who was a child at one point in their life, parents have to be very careful with the words they use because your external words become a child's internal words and that became my internal talk. Every time I wasn't picked for the soccer team, every time I did badly on a quiz and a test, which was all the time, I always said, oh, it's because I have the broken brain. And that became my, my internal conversation. And um, I always tell people, if you fight for your limitations, you get to keep them. If you argue for those limits, they're yours. And I, and I had that all through school. I had such a bad fear of, I was painfully shy, not just introverted, but shy. Because when you, um, when you feel like you're broken, you don't have, feel like you have an, anything to add in terms of value. So I, was, I didn't have a lot of friends. I, I would just watch people and study them and just wonder why was this person, you know, so successful at school or have, you know, so popular or picked for all these teams. And um, I was painfully shy. I would actually, I remember, I don't talk about this a lot, but I, I my, um, they pulled my parents in my English class in high school and I was failing. And it, he was like, the teacher said, okay, I'll give you one chance. You did this extra credit report. And, um, you know, and it was on Einstein and Da Vinci. And, you know, and it, I didn't know anything about them, but this is what's gonna allow you to pass. And I was so excited because I put all my energy in there for months and I did this book report. And, that, and I've never put all of my talent and time and focus into one project before. And uh, the day I had to turn it in, I had it professionally bound. I mean, it was like so proud of it. I've never been good at anything, and um, and at the end of class, the teacher's like, "I have a surprise for everybody. Jim, come up in front of the class and tell everyone about Einstein and Da Vinci." And I uh, I was so scared. I didn't realize I had to give a talk, like a book report on this. So um, I I said I lied. I said I didn't do it. And after three months of pouring my heart and everything into it, my potential, if you will, um, I just. Uh, I lied, I said I didn't do it because I was so fearful of keep getting in front of a group of people. I know fear of public speaking is a big deal for a lot of people. And after, you could t look at the teacher's face, she was so disappointed. Um, and I was disappointed in myself also. And but after the class left, I remember taking it out of my backpack and throwing it into the trash. And I felt like when I did that, I was also throwing away something else, like maybe my, my dreams, if you will. But at the age of 18, I, um, I thought I could turn it all around. I, I was. Uh, lucky enough to get into a college, university. I wanted to make a fresh start, show my family, show the world, show myself I could do it. And I did worse. And, um, and at that time, I just, I just doubled down and, and I was just ready to quit. And the friend's like, hey, why don't you get some perspective before you tell your family you're quitting school, come visit my, my family this weekend, I'm going home. And I did. And the family was pretty well off and, and happy and successful, if you will. Um, and the father walks me around his property and says, Jim, you know, how's school? And I just, that's the worst question you could ask me. And I just start bawling. And I just, I was like, I tell my whole story about the broken brain. He's like, Jim, why are you in school? What do you want to be? What do you want to do? What do you want to have? What do you want to share in the world? And, uh, and I honestly, I didn't have any clue. It's, it's funny, when you don't ask yourself that question, you don't have answers. You know, those were conversations that I had growing up. And they, um, and I, and I go to answer him and he takes out, he says, stop, he takes out a piece of paper out of his back pocket and makes me write it down. And you know how important it is to write and reflect. I never did that before. But when I was done, I had this bucket list of all the things that I want to accomplish. And when I was, I started folding the sheets and he grabbed it out of my hand and he starts reading it. And I'm freaking out because I wasn't expecting him to look at my deepest dreams. 
And when he's done, he's like, Jim, you are this close to everything on that list. And he spreads his fingers about a foot apart. And I was like, no way, give me 10 lifetimes. I'm not gonna crack that list. And he takes his fingers and he puts them to the side of my head. Meaning what's in between is really the answer, the key, the bridge, if you will, which was my brain. And he walks me into a room of his home and into a room I've never seen. You would love it. It's wall to wall, ceiling to floor, covered in books. And I'm phobic of books, right? I mean, I'm just not a good reader, never finished a book in my life. At that time. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this is like, um, I mean, now I, I read I read a book a day. Yes. And I'm so, it, they're my best friends. But um, but they're like, you know, a lot of people are afraid of snakes. It's like being in a room full of snakes. But what makes it worse, he starts grabbing snakes and handing them to me. And I started looking at these titles and they're classics. There's these incredible biographies of men and women in history and some very early personal growth books like Norman Vincent Peale, The Power of Positive Thinking, Dale Carnegie, I mean, Napoleon Hill, all the classics, right? And he's like, Jim, I want you to read one book a week. And I was like, no way, I don't, I'm fighting for my limitations. I can't do that, I have so much schoolwork. And he's looking at me like, Jim, don't let school get in the way of your education. And I didn't realize this was a Mark Twain quote at the time, it was like over 25 years ago. And I was like, that's really insightful, but I still, I can't commit to this. If I'm gonna commit to it, I'm gonna do it. And very smart man, he reaches into his pocket and he still has my bucket list. And he starts reading every single one of my dreams out loud. And I don't know what it was, Jay, just hearing, imagine you're this insecure 18 year old kid and you start hearing your deepest dreams you've, you never articulated out loud yourself, much less you hear from another man's voice and canted out into the universe. And it messed with my mind and my heart, something fierce. And honestly, a lot of the half that list were things I wanted to do for my family. You know, my parents immigrated here from Asia. We, I mean, typical story, we lived in the back of a, a laundry mat, didn't speak the language, didn't have any money, education, any of that. And I just, I wanted to do stuff for my, my family that they, all because of all their sacrifice. And uh, with that leverage and, uh, and understanding the importance of, of, of drive and motivation to get to do, I'm, I'm very curious what motivates people to do things. You know, to take, I don't believe knowledge is power at all. You know, I, you know, all the, it's potential as the potential be power, right? You know, but all the podcasts, online programs, coaching, seminars, none of it works unless we work it. And um, and so with that motivation, I agree to read one book a week. So fast forward, I'm back at school and I'm sitting at my desk, I have a pile of books I have to read for midterms and I have a pile of books that I promise to read. And I couldn't even do one pile of books. So what do I do? I sacrifice. I don't eat, I don't sleep, I don't work out. So I spend time with friends, I don't, I live in the library. And I just, it's not very sustainable. And I end up passing out one night out of sheer exhaustion. I fall down a flight of stairs in the library, hit my head again. And then I wake up two days later in the hospital. And at this point I've lost all, I've, I was, I lost, I went down 117 pounds. It's the scariest point in my life ever. I thought I died. And you know, when you have a near death experience, I mean, it makes you think about like deep about who you are. And you know, I think a lot of people have you know, honestly, near life experiences <laughs> where they're not, they're not, you know, stepping into that place, but um, made me ask a new question. You know, why am I here? Why am I struggling like this? And I didn't have any answers. Just like, man, I have a really slow brain. And then at that time, you know, the nurse came in with a mug of tea and it had a picture of the same one, the person I did the book report on is Albert Einstein. And it was like, and there's a quote on there. I felt like he was speaking to me. It said the same level of thinking that's created your problem won't solve your problem. I was like, well, what's my problem? I was like, I have a very slow learner. I'm a very slow brain. He's like, well, how do I think differently about it? Well, maybe I can learn how to learn faster. Maybe I can learn how to have a faster brain. And I put my studies aside and I just start studying learning, you know, learning how to learn. I think it's a superpower. If there's one skill to master in the 21st century, you know, with all this change that's going on, rapid change, it's the only constant is just how do you learn it and absorb it and think differently and apply it. And so I started studying neuroscience, adult learning theory, multiple intelligences, um, anything I get my hands on, mnemonics, speed reading, everything. And then about six days into it, a light switch went on and I started to understand things for the very first time. I mean, it was just like, and I remember, I never talk about this, but I, I remember the time, the moment it happened. It was, um, we were in class, it was about 300 people in a lecture center. And back then there were these, um, these overhead projectors, right? And with these, you know, and <laughs> like with these, with these like, yeah. with these pulling like, and, um, and the professor put something on the overhead projector and you know, a few seconds into it, I just start laughing. And I'm so quiet, I'm the quiet one in class. I do everything to not, like if I was to have one superpower back in school, it was invisibility. Like I didn't wanna be seen, I didn't, I mean, I wanted to be seen, I wanted to be heard, 
but I didn't want the spotlight. You know, and so because you know when you're broken and you feel like you're not enough, you don't want that attention. But I start laughing out loud, really loud, and everyone turns around and looks at me, and I'm freaking out, like oh my goodness, because、like, I didn't realize it. And then about 30 seconds into it, other people started laughing. There was this ripple effect, and we were laughing at what was on the screen. But I had just read it and learned it really fast, right at that moment, and I didn't realize it at the time.、Um, oh wow! But with my grades, when my grades improved, my life improved, and. Here's the thing: when my inspiration really was my desperation, you know how I ended up on this path all those years ago was I couldn't help but help other people, right? You talk about your passion, and my passion became learning, but my purpose also became teaching,、mm-hmm. you know, sharing it with other people because I felt really upset that I wasn't taught this back in school, and I had to go through all that suffering and struggling every single day,、mm-hmm. you know, sometimes crying myself to sleep, not feeling I was enough. 